Shark fans, we're back with another edition of Chumming It Up. I'm Jameson Carter. This week, lucky enough to be joined by NSU head volleyball coach Brian Rosen. Coach, thanks for taking the time this afternoon. How's life been treating you? Oh, thanks for having me. Life is definitely different these days, but I'm excited to be with some fellow Sharks today and uh, to kind of share our story a little bit. And uh, I have a seven-year-old daughter, so getting to spend some time with uh, with another adult is always a positive. Good. Yeah, we'll get you get you a little break there. So. <laughs> Let's dive right in, but Coach, um, you know, year one, 2019, you take over a program that was 6-24. and 24. You lead them to their first 21 season since 2008. When you first got on campus, you know, dissected the roster, what kind of obstacles did you see with what you were facing? And two, as, as the season progressed, when, when did you see the girls start to buy in and really start believing and they could win some games? Yeah, honestly, the the – the roster when I arrived on campus was one of the most exciting parts of taking this job. Uh, it was four kids. Uh, that's how many returners we had. So it gave me an opportunity as a coach to have a clean slate and and bring in new players to this program and completely change uh, the vision of the program. Uh, so I think that was one of the hardest things to do from the beginning was change the expectations of what NSU volleyball could be. Uh, so we brought in six freshmen, six Division One transfers. Uh, when we started preseason, most of our kids had never even met before. Uh, so it was really special. Uh, camp was when I started to notice that this team could be something something really special, something different. Uh, they already had really high expectations, probably even higher than I had. I mean, they were already asking where the national championships were going to take place during camp, um, uh, which, of course, we told them, and, and we set really high goals. Uh, but it was, a, it was a special group of the 16 players we had. None of them had ever actually participated in an NCAA tournament game. Uh, honestly, most of the players we brought in had been on historically losing programs. Uh, so it was really spe special to see them all come in, uh, buy into this this goal of this new program and this new vision. Uh, and right from the start, uh, the competitive level in our gym was amazing. Uh, so we started our first practice with like a midnight madness. Uh, so like literally the clock struck midnight. We had a serve in the air. Uh, we had a big focus on sense of urgency this season. Uh, and they were awesome with that. And there was no better way to start our season than we literally played like a blue-gray scrimmage to 25, and then we went home that night. Um, but I know as a coaching staff, like Celine and I, we left that night thinking, man, if we if we can put this together, we have a lot of talent in our gym. Uh, and, and they were really good. We hit the ground running. Uh, first tournament of the season, we went 4-0. Uh, of course, uh, that, that's where, again, like we had to change some expectations. Uh, we had a lot of people telling us, like you already won four games. Like all you need is two more, and you're and you're there. Um, so that that was that was the that was the big the biggest hurdle, honestly, in the season was like six wins is not our goal. Uh, like we have much higher expectations for ourselves, and uh, really fortunate we had, we had seven wins going after our second weekend, so we could finally get get rid of those things. Uh, and then conference play started, and that hit our kids like a wall. Uh, it, it was really important for especially our transfers that came in to learn how hard our conference is. So I think we started 0-3 in the conference right off the bat playing three, three really good programs. Uh, and, then, uh, and then they started realizing what it was going to take to win our conference, and we did. And, uh, as a coach, like, I'm just really proud of the, the work that this group put in, not just on the volleyball court, but the culture they built off of the court uh, was, was just awesome to watch as a coach. You guys closed very strong last year. Believe it or not, you can hold this against the rest of the coaches in the department. You do have the longest current win streak with six after the end of last season. But, you know, with that success kind of in place, the foundation, but with the adversity you're facing, how do you plan on continuing the momentum and e even building upon it, you know, this off season with what's been going on and into next year? Yeah, I know that our, our team is not sitting on the fact, man, we won our last six games because I'll be honest, our season did not end on a high. Our season ended with us sitting in a conference room learning that we didn't make the NCAA tournament. Uh, and I know for a fact that our, our returning players are using that as huge motivation this offseason. Our spring before it was cut short uh, was one of the best springs I've ever been a part of. Uh, they were so competitive. It was such a great group. So uh, that was the biggest bummer of being sent home was uh, cutting that short. Uh, but I know that it's still fuel fueling our team this offseason. Uh, they're 
getting in the gym, they're working out anywhere they can, they're doing workouts at home. Uh, so I know that they're very fired up to have have a season, uh, whatever that's going to look like this fall. We know it's going to be different, uh, but they feel, as coaches, we feel that if we can have a season this year, it's going to be really special, and they're going to use that motivation of that feeling we had when we didn't make the NCAA tournament as a huge motivator for this season. That obviously being a motivator, but with the foundation you've laid, you know, the girls that you have returning, the ones that are coming in, where, where do you say the program is right at this point? Say on a scale of one to 10, where would you rate it and where, where do you want to get better? I'd put us at about a, a six or a seven right now because we, we set some pretty clear goals this past season. And one of them being uh, to beat every team in the SEC, SEC at least once. Uh, and we came up one team short of that this year. So that's that's a huge check mark on our list of things to do. Uh, uh, Lynn being that team, uh, so we'd love to uh, love to get another chance at them and, and everyone in our conference. And then to make the NCAA tournament, uh, we, we fell just short of that. We we really thought we had a chance to get in this past season. So so we we, we have definitely we have room for growth and we have room to still achieve the goals that we set this past year that will reset and refocus on this year. We have a great group of kids that are coming in to join our team. Uh, and that's that's something really special that our our returners have been so protective of our culture and this team and have been uh, very clear on the kind of players and people that they want in this program moving forward. Then switching gears a little bit, I know you're you're very involved with the social media with the team. You know, we might even call you a little social media guru over there. But uh, you know, with with the way things have been recently. And I know you're big on cohesion and team bonding and the culture, as you're mentioning. Can you talk about some of the ways you've been able to implement those aspects, you know, with the team being a part these last few months? Yeah, like really, really, I'm just the facilitator person in the end. I just stick the stuff on Instagram. I don't know most of the filters or any of those things at all. Um, but our team has stayed really connected. And it started, it started in the spring. They created a program called... Uh, the winter buddies, and then that became spring buddies, summer buddies. I'm not really sure anymore. Uh, but so they they get together once a week with somebody different, uh, and they're not allowed to talk volleyball. They just like get to know each other better. They just catch up on how things are going, uh, and then they send some kind of like picture back from that. Uh, while they're here for school, it was more of like actually like, going and doing things, like going to get coffee. Uh, now it's FaceTime. Uh, and then once a week, they Zoom with each other as a team, again, just to catch up. Like, it's all not volleyball related. It's just, like, let's spend time with each other. They're, they're trying to bring in these new sharks uh, and kind of show them, like, what this family is all about. And uh, so that's been really special. I have not asked them to do anything. Like, they are really, uh, really good. We have great leadership on our team, and they, they've done an awesome job, like, creating this environment with each other. Awesome. Coach Rosen, great stuff. I appreciate you doing this with us. Looking forward to another exciting volleyball season, knock on wood, hopefully here in the next few months. But thanks very much. Thank you. Go Sharks. Go Sharks.